to order. Ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Nick, can we get two more seats up there for Mr. Floor and his council? Two more wins. Break by you guys like we did last time. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Floor and council, if you could please come forward. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Just call the. Call the continuation of the public hearing to order at 6:04 p.m. At the request of Mr. Plord, you were not able to attend our last meeting. He, well, via email and through the meeting, asked to continue, which we did this evening. Um, did you have any statements before we started, or? I'm sorry? Did you have any statements before we started? Well, um, I don't know where we are on this as far as the hearing is concerned. I, there are some other things that I'd like to say with regard to the with regard to the appeal, so if that's what you're asking me, then I'm yeah. happy to begin. Is there any possible way to speak up for people? Now, your condition is running out. Speaking a lot of noise. Sure. Make it hotter. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, I've had a lot of time to think about this since the last time we were here, and one of the things that I did do as well is I put together a letter, which I sent copies um, to the uh, zoning board and to the board of selectmen. Uh, the letter was to Mr. Tomo. Uh, I don't know if the board's had a chance to look at that letter. And Never even received it. Okay. Well. Um, <laughs> The first thing I wanted to point out was that we spoke quite a bit about this motion for clarification, which was filed by the town uh, after the court uh, trial. And the town had asked for the judge to clarify this issue of what the town was saying was occasional use, and asked for an order that um, the judge rule that the track could only be used an occasional, uh, occasionally, and that the judge set some uh, standards for time and hours and things of that nature. Which is what we attempted to do at our first meeting. And I'm assuming it was unsuccessful? Well, the negotiation about a settlement, yeah, we weren't able to work anything out there. But the, what I'm getting back, and that's why we're here, obviously, but what I'm getting back at is, is that I pointed out that that motion was denied, that the court was not willing to, to acknowledge that the word occasional was used as part of the decision and that the track can only be used occasionally. And I know town council for some reason uh, indicated to you, because you asked the good question, you know, well, if this motion was already denied, why, you know, why are we here? And uh, town council for some reason thought that that motion had been taken under advisement and that no action was taken on it. And uh, that just it wasn't true. Um, and I provided a copy of the, the denial. That motion was denied. So in other words, we've already gone through this um, in court with a judge on whether or not what Mr. Plourd is doing is um, something that the judge has said he can't do. And the judge has denied that motion. Um, I'd also point out, too, that if the town wanted to uh, claim that Mr. Plourd was exceeding uh, or had, had, uh, um, had uh, increased the activity on the property to the point where it was uh, past what was grandfathered, they should have raised that issue the first time um, in the first cease and desist order, and that issue should have been litigated in court the first time. There's, uh, 
the doctrine of collateral stop and race judicata, which prevents litigants from coming back to court more than once to litigate claims that could have been litigated the first time around. So if the board were to deny Mr. Plourd's appeal and, say, and, and uphold the decision of the building inspector, we would simply go into court and say, Judge, you know, they've already had a chance to have this issue heard and, uh, in the first litigation, and they chose not to, so they don't have the right to even uh, issue a cease and desist at this point. So in, in Mr. Thomo's literature to our board, he quotes from the uh, court decision, and correct me if he's incorrect, there is certainly a difference in the effect on the neighborhood of the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track and numerous commercial competitive races being hosted on the property. And it, it's not in quotes, I don't know if it's paraphrased or not, but the decision uh, stated that the racing was not a pre-existing non-conforming use and granted the town a permanent injunction prohibiting the same. The court further held that the property could be used for limited motocross practice, explaining what I just quoted before. But that's not what the court said. The court used the word occasional motocross practicing in comparing practice to racing and saying that practice is different from racing. And the fact that the motion for clarification, which was later denied, um, would substantiate that point. If the judge meant to say that, that she could have very easily have clarified the issue or, or allowed the motion. She didn't allow the motion, she denied the motion saying that that's not what I said. So before town council summarizes what, what we're trying to say, our position is through the town, um, I guess through the council, Mr. Plord, why, in my opinion, you should be here for a special permit as opposed to administrative appeal. For what reason? Based on our bylaws for non-conforming use. Well, he's I not a non-conforming use. He's a pre-existing non-conforming use, which is allowed by law to continue. And what we're reading as a board is that it was ruled that that function is not considered pre-existing non-conforming. What function is that? The motocross. Well, we've got a court decision which says that it is. Well, this is all we have in front of us, sir, so I guess it goes to tell well, let, let, let me try to clarify a couple of things. With respect to this motion for clarification, um, in his opposition, opposing counsel invited us to, to, to actually uh, serve a cease and desist order if we believed that the property owner was, in fact, exceeding the use. Um, so the court denied it. Would, the, the, the court didn't deny it and say it's not occasional. The court didn't deny it. It, it said denied, period. With respect to um, counsel's uh, uh, claim that this res judicata, the thing has been decided, um, I, I think what's happening here is uh, there's a fundamental misunderstanding as to what's going on here. Um, a pre-existing non-conforming use, even a lawful one, doesn't entitle a property owner to carte blanche, do whatever you want. There is such a, a, a case where a use that was pre-existing, non-conforming, has expanded or changed so much so that it suddenly becomes un, uh, unprotected. And uh, in, in doing that, the courts have in the powers, so-called powers case, which is, uh, I'll give it to you, Powers versus the building inspector of Barnstable, the court has put together a test, a three-prong test. Any one of these prongs is found to have been triggered, then the use has expanded to the point where it's no longer protected. And that's exactly what the zoning enforcement officer is saying here. With respect to uh, this, what we are left with with the decision is to try to figure out what the court found was the baseline pre-existing non-conforming use. It's a cinch that the court absolutely found no commercial racing. And in so its- So in, in your opinion, the court decision states Mr. Plourd cannot have any commercial racing down there whatsoever. I, I think, well, well, no commercial, no racing down there whatsoever. No commercial racing down so, there whatsoever. So this is the fine, fine line. Racing, I can practice down there. Commercial racing, I'm charging for that practice down there. Well, where are we at? Well, there, I, I think there might be a difference between practice and racing, and this is what this is what the property owner is trying to exploit here. Well, I'm using the word commercial. To me, commercial means charging for. Sure. Well, I mean, he's charging for 
so-called practice. Um, I, I think fairly read that the court found that there was there was a difference in nature and kind from commercial racing to, and I, I again, I'm going to go back to the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track. In my opinion, fairly read, and you have a copy of the decision, fairly read, that decision basically says that the grandfathered use is the occasional practice rider. Uh, we have, we'll, we'll get the trial transcript, so we'll see what the, what the, what the, uh, what the testimony was, but I can tell you, City, having tried that case, and I'm sure that these two can't, won't deny it, they may deny it or they may not remember, but when we get the transcript, we'll hear it, is that nowhere was there testimony that they were, that they were allowing practice, I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday from 10 to dusk. It's just, it, it, it wasn't, that's not the testimony. The testimony was that occasionally these guys, uh, Mr. Wallace had a track out there, he had an old bulldozer, and he would take contributions to help, to help, uh, to help maintain the track. Now, I got here from what I pulled off the internet, not me, but from what the town has pulled off the internet, that shows that there is a significant amount of of practicing going down there. The, the, the thing is, in all intents and purposes, it's a commercial, pra if giving him the benefit of the doubt, it's a commercial practice track. And under the so-called powers test, there are three prongs that, that, the, that the ZBA needs to take a look at. One of them is whether the use reflects the nature and purpose of the original use prevailing when the zoning bylaw took effect. For example, whether or not it's motocross riding. So again, we would have to go back to this court decision to determine what exactly was the uh, nature and purpose of the original prevailing use when, the, when it came to effect. I, I keep going back to that one line. There is certainly a difference in the effect on the neighborhood of the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track. So to the extent that we can say it was motocross riding, he, he, he may be okay on that. But the other two are whether there's a difference in quality or character as well as the degree of the original use if you look at this court decision, there is a, certainly a difference in the effect of the neighborhood of the occasional motocross rider. We have documentation that this thing is going on five days a week, eight, ten hours a day. That, that to me, and, and it's, it's up to you, but that so is... My, my, my question now <clears throat> goes to the fact that I, I believe Mr. Thomo cited him for multiple businesses. He, he did two things. Yes. He did the beyond the, the, the so-called powers that's beyond and whether or not there were, and I was going to get there, whether or not there are two businesses down there. I understand from, from Mr. Uh, Tomo that he, he actually runs a vending machine business out of there. He has a commercial practice track down there. He has a pro shop. And, uh, you know, to the extent that he's got a bike wash that he allows people to come in and out of there and wash their bikes, you know, I, I don't know if that's maybe accessory to his track, but the fact of the matter is there appears to be at least uh, at least two businesses in violation of your zoning bylaw. And the selectmen tried to, to nip this in the bud years ago with business licenses. Unfortunately, people that go to the town clerk that pull, was it good for a year, three years, whatever, uh, believe that they can operate a business, which that's not how it works. We have bylaws that are set up. Um, Multiple businesses in that in that district sir, are, are against our bylaws, and that's where we go back to trying to work this out over a month ago, versus um, the the special permit, which I believe you should be here for, as opposed to the cease and desist. Can I respond to that? Yep. Um, there's always been two businesses there. I mentioned this the last time, and they're both in for that reason. It's grandfathered. Uh, Mr. Wallace ran a machine shop there. And he ran a track there. Well, just because he's running it doesn't mean he's running it legally. The, the, the zone is... But he was doing it before the zoning came into effect, so it's grandfathered. Well, Mr. Plore's not running a machine shop, is he? But it's a business, so it's still grandfathered. I, I, would, I would disagree with that. And isn't, it's in commercial anyway, so he's, he's allowed to do that. He doesn't need a permit. I think, isn't that a commercial property? Mm -hmm. It's in a commercial zone. So he doesn't need a permit to run a vending business there. And there's always been two businesses going on there, so there's no reason why he would need any other further permits at this point. The track is grandfathered. The vending is uh, uh, lawfully permitted under the zoning bylaws. 
So it all boils down to occasional use. Well, no, it's, no that, sorry. It, in my opinion, they would need to show that that second business was in fact grandfathered. That wasn't part of any court decision. That has never been, that a determination has never been made. Uh, I think you correctly point out that running a woodworking business may be may not fall within the, uh, uh, the the same type of business which would which would have the grandfathering which would enjoy the grandfathering protections we don't know if that woodworking business was in fact uh, discontinued for for more than two for more than two years so that that determination has never been made and it is incumbent upon the applicant here the the appellant to, to, to make that proof and I don't, I don't see in the information that I have, and I, I think I've probably looked at every piece of paper the town has, um, I, I could be wrong, but I don't see that that determination has ever been made. And I don't see uh, any denial that there, that there isn't at least two businesses going on down there. I really wish this could have been resolved. We've had over a month. It's not our fault. It's their <laughs> fault. Well, well, I... I, I I, I, so I'm going to open this up to the three other members. I'm done. If, if, if I may, I, I think, Mr. Chairman, that um, if they're done presenting their side, I think that there, there should be some, some at least evidence taken to support any decision that you may or may not make. That well, was, that you may make. That was going to enter you? or Well, I, I, I can do it on behalf of the yeah. zoning enforcement officer. First of all, I would I like do have some other things okay. to say, if, if, you know. Can he introduce evidence first? I don't care what tie, tie you're, you're, you know. You're in charge. You want to, but I just I don't want you to think that I don't have anything left to say or have any other witnesses. Okay. The other thing I do want to mention is that apparently the clam box is down there providing food as well during these practices. Well, they're not because they were down there, and the board of health told them not to go down there anymore. So they're not. So I'd like to present. It. This is a, a printout of. Um, and just by way of objection, this is all hearsay. That's not anything that anybody has just. Like, like, they they weren't able to work anything no. out. Okay. Um, well, like I said, the, the okay. day before. Okay. Mr. Chairman, there there is no such thing as rule of evidence during our CDA. Yeah, so you can. I mean, this is everything. this is the court decision. I think you have a copy of this. This is what I want to see. Do you have this? I don't. Maybe you can. Yeah. Feel free to look at it here. <laughs> There's another copy. There's a copy. I, and actually, I, I, have, I do have. And there's another copy. We can can have this. But additionally, I, I do believe that there are at least some neighbors out there that wanted to provide testimony, and I don't know if any of them are. are and, and I'm not going to co-opt your meeting, Mr. Mr. Chairman. But I believe that there are at least some neighbors out there that can speak to the frequency of the use of the track. I think that's already been established. Uh, through the certainly through the through written the, information I've provided you, there are there are hours out there. Plus, we have uh, testimony from our first meeting. All right. So that with respect to the so-called powers test, I, I already outlined two of them. Um, the, the 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 test is whether the use reflects the nature and purpose of the original use prevailing when the zoning bylaw took effect. Secondly, whether there is a difference in the quality or character as well as the degree of the principal or the original use, and whether the current use is different in kind, worse in its effect on the neighborhood. I would suggest to you, uh, if any of the, if, if the expansion of the use falls in any one of these criteria, the, the use is deemed to have changed and is not protected, subjecting it to the current zoning requirements. So I would again I would I would suggest to you that Certainly, with respect to uh, prong number two, whether there's a difference in the quality or character, as well as the degree of the original use, um, the original use, as I understand it from this court decision, was for the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track. Certainly, the information that you have before you is not occasional motocross rider practicing at the track, but rather a full-blown commercial practice track uh, uh, together with a, a, at one time, catered food, um, a bike wash, a, a pro shop. So I would suggest to you that the evidence before you clearly shows that there is a significant difference. Three, whether the current use is different in kind or worse in its effect on the neighborhood. 
you can certainly, from the testimony that was provided to you at the first hearing, uh, people are are at their wit's end with the with the increase in noise. Certainly, an increase over the uh, occasional motocross rider practicing at the track. Um, with respect to whether or not there are two principal uses of the business, um, the fact that he's that he may be per, e e even giving him the benefit of the doubt that he is in fact. Um, a pre-existing non-conforming use for the uh, for the amount of what he's doing right now with his motocross. That is a principal use of the property, together with uh, a, a vending business out of there. Uh, that vending business and two principal uses of the property have never been. There's never been a legal determination as to whether the whether or not that's pre-existing and non-conforming. And I. I will obviously reserve until uh, the appellant is able to provide evidence, but I've seen no evidence that, that that is in fact true. So I would suggest to you that this board could make a determination um, that the that the current use of the property is a, is an expansion such that it now requires him to come into compliance with the zoning bylaw. And as you correctly pointed out in the beginning of this hearing, that would require a special permit. To do what he's doing down there. Members? We're not, we're not a court of law. We can't decide what he's talking about. We've got it. We've got it. But we take, the court that we, take, we take all this into he, account for yeah. the appeal before us. Okay, yeah. That say the plaintiff can use the motor car yeah. track for practice. He can't use it for racing. She states in the back he can use it for practice. Can't use it for racing. We're not here to find occasional or anything like that. We're here to help him get other well, other not, special permits to run his other entities but, that he wants but to. But we're do. not because when we started this, I made the statement that they're not here for a special permit. They're here well, strictly they, to appeal the cease and desist. They, they are. My 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 take on it is he's got permission from the court to run drivers. He can't race. And we've, we've been provided through counsel from Mr. Thomo, the zoning enforcement officer, that he's going above and beyond just practicing. He's doing the racing, which the court states he can. Wait a minute. Well, There's nobody saying he's racing. can't decide how much practicing he can do. She says he can practice. That's it. She doesn't say he can do it on one day's only. She doesn't say he has to do it <coughs> after dark or something. I, I agree with that as well. That's you why know, I so want I mean, to make this civil. It's pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty cut and dry. and used for practice. So. If he's got other things going on, like a vending people staging out there, he should be instructed how to come to us and get a special permit to have that additional use. Which they've made the statement that they're unwilling to do because they believe they grandfather. Again, mm -hmm. Roger, what's before us is what Nick gave okay. him was that cease and desist, okay. and he's appealing that. He's okay. not applying for a special permit. I, I realize that, but we should instruct them that maybe you know they could do it that way. Which I tried to, and they made the fact, the statement that they grandfather. Danielle? Yeah. I have mixed so many nice feelings. I think that the, the track is a great thing. I have a four year old niece who rides. I think it's great. But I also feel bad for the people in the area. Like, is there anything you, you can do, like, on the water side? Or Why do like, you feel bad for them? I mean, I live a quarter of a mile away. I don't hear a thing. I don't have any water near me or anything like that where the sound goes over. Um, but if I lived in the backyard and I heard that all day, I'd probably be pretty... Have you ever like, gone over there and listened to it? No. Okay, well that's the problem because what these people are claiming is unbearable noise is within the legal limits. If I can make an analogy, if you live on a road, the speed limit was 50, and you didn't like cars going by 50 miles an hour because you didn't think it was safe, and you started complaining about it, well, you don't have any grounds to complain. You're within the legal limits. This deplored is within the legal limits. And I understand that people don't like hearing that noise. But what he's doing is perfectly legal, and somebody's got to stand but again, up. But again, sir, what we're, what we're talking about is the multiple use of the property. I, I think we, we keep drifting away from that. There's, a, there's obviously sympathy from this entire board for both parties. Yeah. Here or there. We, we can go down every avenue of discussion. I'm, I'm a firm advocate for racing. I, yeah. I did it when I was a kid. I have a bike outside that I ride. And we talk about deaths on this track. I, I, between you and I, I think that was inappropriate. I think it, it's sad, but it's a fact. 
I had a child coming to my classroom that died on a motorcycle coming to my classroom. It doesn't mean I shut my doors down. So I sympathize with you. God bless you Thank for you. having to bear that. But again, we're here for what Mr. Thomo gave your client. Well, it's quite and you're, simple. You're claiming that it's grandfather, the other users. Yeah, it's quite simple. I mean, it's he's running a motocross track. He's running a vending company. The vending company is allowed by zoning. The zone, motocross track is grandfathered. All these other things, like the bike wash and the showers and the pro shop, those are all part of having a motocross track. They're not a different business. He didn't open up a car dealership or something like that. People get done riding, they can take a shower. They don't get charged extra for it. It's an outdoor shower. They can wash their bike. Uh, if they break a lever or they have a bad, you know, a tire blows up, there's replacement parts. This gentleman is the only one that tonight that I've heard from the town that understands that, and I'm glad this is on film, and Jeff's a friend of mine, and I know he's not going to like what I have to say, but hopefully we'll still be friends because, you know, we both have our job to do, but he's leading you down the wrong path. The only decision that the judge made was, was that track grandfathered? It wasn't, you know, what kind of a grandfather it was. Again, sir, the, 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 the only thing that we have before us is that cease and desist yeah. on multiple use of that property. And I've not how loud the track is, not what he can do, what the hours are, Mr. Thomo, and that, that's just arguments that we've made. What is before you also is the expansion of that use, the expanded use of that track. That's the multiple ball. There's well, it's, it's two. It's two parts. It's multiple numerous. businesses. And that's Roger, Roger making the racing analogy versus a practice analogy. Sure. And, and there, is, there, is, there is this so-called powers test. And to think that once a use ah. is declared a pre-existing non-conforming use, and heretofore you can, you can never violate that, um, you just have to read the powers decision. It's clear that this is something that the power decision and the, and the 300 cases that follow it um, after that, that this is a, this is a matter of degree. So the courts are using it as case law. Right. It's a matter of degree. And, 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 and Jeff is not leading you down a path. Um, what we need to do is we need to determine... And I truly believe you'll still remain friends. <laughs> I'm still going to be friends. I'm friends with everybody. Well, well, like, you know, what well, we a need, paycheck helps, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> what we need to do is we need to determine what the baseline was in the course decision. And, and I've given you the decision. You've read it. I, I think it's a little less simplistic than you can practice, you, you can't race. You read in, in there, and what the court found was there is a difference in commercial racing versus the occasional motocross rider. So what she was saying was, it was occasional motocross practice there, you can't race. So therefore, the baseline was the occasional motocross uh, uh, practice rider. Which Here it's not. Which you're not, you're not debating that you're racing, you're admitting that you're racing. No, there's no, no racing. There's no racing. No racing. racing at all. And so everything that is presented online for advertising and yeah, I mean... That's not racing? That's not racing, no, it's practice. <laughs> <laughs> racing would be would a be starting line. A, a, racing, a race is a starting line with checkered flags, uh, trophies, and all that other nonsense. The it's same as any of your... Yeah, yeah NEMA, NESC, any of that. Yeah. So nobody goes there and gets first, second, third, no. please. No. What, what's a <laughs> stimulant line? Stimulant, Stimulant practice day is what it is. Wait, what is it? It's just a guy who rents a track for the day and they just have practice. That's it. They also sponsor races? No, they're, they do uh, the Masters and Minis race, but they don't do so, that there. Right, but they, they do. do that there. And that is part of the problem here. So I don't think Mr. Tomo ever went to the track. I don't think he spoke to Mr. Porter. I'm not allowed on the track, sir. Well, you didn't ask to come down and because you had a question about a zoning violation. If somebody has a legitimate reason to come down, I told the Conservation Commission, if there's a legitimate reason to come onto the property, you're going to be allowed. But to arbitrarily come onto the property is not allowed on anyone's property. I don't think anybody here wants the Conservation Commission coming on doing inspections just for the sake of doing inspections. But if somebody has a legitimate concern, they can call us, they can talk to us, and we'll address it. That was never done here. So a lot of these things you're reading online and you're making assumptions like Jeff just did. 
And just so I can finish my one thought, okay, the original decision by the court was just simply to determine whether or not the track was grandfathered for motocross practice. And that's why the decision, as this gentleman has said a couple times, it just says plaintiff can use motocross track for practice. It doesn't say plaintiff can use motocross track for occasional practice because that wasn't what the court was deciding. The court was deciding, is that the grandfathered use? Yeah. Now the powers test is to determine whether there's been a change or a substantial expansion to that use, which is motocross practice. So in other words, if he was grandfathered for motocross practice, and now he decides, well, you know what, I'm gonna have motocross racing too. Well, that's a substantial change or alteration which you have to use the powers test for, and that's what the court did in, the, in its decision. They looked at the powers test to see if racing was a substantial extension or, or a change from practice. And she did say, yes, it is a change from practice. But it doesn't take away from the fact that that use, motocross, motocross riding on that property for practice, is grandfathered. And there aren't any restrictions, because there never were any. And, uh, you know, as long as he's within the laws for, for noise and dust and pollution, which he is, there's no limit on how much of that use can be done. I mean, you don't get to say, well, you can only, you know, be motocross riding on there, you know, this day and that day and the other day. It's, it's a grandfathered use, and you have to stay within all of the other relevant laws and regulations, which he's doing. And that's the argument. That's that's the semantics. Are you a year round? No. So you're not no, I like round. to take I like to take some time off myself. And you basically close when the sun goes down. Yes. Yes. I, I did notice that there was a on the, on in that packet of information that talked about allowing studded, not screwed tires. And that was in that. That was a, a snowmobile. Yeah, that never happened though. That's and the it, thing. I I tried to get some snowmobiles down there uh, when it was really deep. You know. We had two feet of snow. No one showed, so I don't do it anymore. That's it. So, so close the track down when it gets cold, and I don't open it up back till the spring. So I take the whole winter off. I take vacations. I enjoy myself, and I once spring hits, I bust my butt and work. I mean, these are kids. They're using it. It's seasonal. I, I don't know. To me, that's not seasonal use. Even the itself. So, Mr. Mr. Thelmo, you lo you're losing them, so... No, I'm not losing anything, sir. The thing is, the board is obligated to follow the Brookfield zoning bylaws. Right. That's what you guys are obligated to vote on. I think and it's very it evident, is. according to my cease and desist, what it says yeah. and what he's doing. There is a violation here. That's why we're here. I'm not, no, I'm not making anything up. And your claim for the violation for the record, Mr. Thelmo, is what? Well, the uh, accessory uses without a permit. Which, uh, which, which are? The uh, vending business, uh, expansion of the uh, primary use. Which is? That's a violation of the court order. What's the expansion? He's using it year-round. Um, excuse me. During the during the spring, summer, and fall. I think the court it doesn't give enough detail. I think it's too bland for us to even. You can't go one way. You can't go the other. I, I, I think it's so. It's so like minimal wording when it comes to occasional use. Like it's so minimal. In, in, in order to find under the powers test. Right. right. In, and the court did go through that analysis, and I hope you've had a chance to read it. Yeah. But in order to make its determination, it had to have found a baseline. And then from the baseline, it needed to determine whether or not commercial racing was a substantial increase. Right. Okay? Right. And that's exactly what it did in the next to the last paragraph when it said there is a substantial increase in, nature, in the nature and kind from the occasional motocross riot. So that's its baseline. The court determined that's the baseline. That's the protected use versus commercial racing. So we have a court determination that it's occasional motocross riot. Mr. Tomo has found that through the evidence that we presented that it occasional is now and again. 
we found now that it's five or six days a week, eight, nine hours a day. And your determination is, in my opinion, whether or not that is the occasional motocross ride. I would practice. Uh, my opinion is if it was year round, I think there would be a huge issue. But it's not year round. So it's already right there. If you know. To me, I don't. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Could I ask a procedural question? Yes, you may. Um, for you to town council. I'm a little puzzled by the makeup of the people at the table because I believe at least one of the members is an alternate and we had a member here before who is not here this evening. I'm wondering what the process is, what the um, format is for the use of alternates, whether that has been formally established and an alternate is needed. I don't know, um, Mr. Simon, if you're an alternate. Um, Mr. Mr. Simon is now a full member. Mr. Okay. Mundell is an alternate. Okay, so you have three members. Was he always a member? Mr. Simon, Mr. Simon was. Simon always a member in the course of the process of the multiple hearings this has been. So I'm just, it, it's a question through you, Mr. Chairman, for town council about procedural, about who's sitting at the table and whether they and are all. I believe this question is already. Sitting there. I believe this question is already been answered at another meeting. We are legal. There, there, there are four members sitting here right now. I understand that this gentleman, and I'm sorry I don't know your name, um, was able to bring himself up to speed as he can from the first meeting by watching the videotape of the meeting, and he's taken all the necessary steps to allow him to do it under the so-called Mullins rule. So it's my understanding that there are four here. Well, what's an alternate? Doesn't matter. Still on there. Still on there. Uh, there are four here. You need uh, to uphold or to overturn a decision of the ZEO, you need four out of five members of a board. I see. So of a five member board. So it's gonna it has to be unanimous to overturn him or else it it, it won't be overturned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tim? We have not spoke yet. Questions, comments? Yeah I'd like to know uh, what is the principal use at your property? Well, there's two. There's two principal uses. There's the vending business and there's the track. Okay, I'll ask again. I'd like to know what the, the principal use there, is, not the two principal uses, the one there isn't. principal use. There isn't. There's two. So you're claiming there's two principal uses. Um, and so um, how would you describe the two uh, principal uses? Is, um, is one uh, from uh, non-conforming principal use from the past? The track is. And that's the track. And yeah. so what's the other principal use? The vending. Okay. And um, do you have any adults uh, riding on the track? Yes. You do. And is it primarily adults that ride on the track? I would say it's primarily. It's a mix. It is. There's kids, a lot of kids and adults. What sort of mix? It's like 60-40. Of? 60% adults, 40% kids. Okay. So, there's a difference. This is the um, something that the court said. There's a difference in quality or character and degree of use and the effect uh, on the neighborhood between hosting races for children as opposed to adults in terms of possible hours of operation and the potential behavior of the participants and fans. There's a certainly um, a difference, uh, well, he's talking about the difference in effect, but um, it appears that the court is approving non-conforming uh, non previous use because there were school children there practicing on the track or in races, hosting races of school age children, not adult competitors. So there's a difference in quality or character and degree of use and the effect on the neighborhood between hosting races for children as opposed to adults. 
So <clears throat> races aren't allowed, but you're saying that you don't have any races. That's correct. And Tim, I, I think he'd win in a court of law that he's not having races. I think he's doing it. He's smart enough that he's doing it in a way that he can consider it practice. There are, uh, but in the cease and desist, there's, um, there's that and there's other parts of more um, non Conforming more than, but that, more, that's more than those. Two that's where we get into it. And I, I would ask that he comes for for that special permit for the accessory uses, and technically the vending machine or the vending company. That Roger's right. This last paragraph claims that he can have practice at that facility, and I think he's playing the game where he's legally not having races. He's practicing, but at the same time, I think Mr. Thomo is right that there are accessory uses there that are prohibited by our bylaws. And this is why I wanted it resolved prior to having us make a decision. How do we know there's not races there? We, it's, all, it's all words. I mean, we don't know anything. What makes you yeah. think that there are? An association like NEMA, what? New England Motocross <laughs> Association, yeah. somebody like that, would be there in full force. And you'd have people Sa coming in and the announcements and trophies and whatever. It, it's right. The, those organizations are not there. So that's your definition of a race. My definition of a, of a sanctioned race is you have somebody like NEMA or I, I didn't other, say several organizations. I didn't say sanctioned. Okay. Sanctioned means it's sponsored by NEMA, the Magnum Motor Car Association. I didn't or, say sanctioned. I said sanctioned. Yeah, okay. Sanctioned means it's, it's you know, put on by them. He provides the place. It's not happening. It's not an official race happening. How do you know? I know. How, how do you know any? How do you know any more than what he's saying? But it's also wording again. It's all words because kids could be practicing there, and are they racing each other? Sure, probably. In but they're minds, practicing. Yeah. yeah, in their minds. So it's again, in their it's minds are racing in their minds. Words, racing, practice. Yeah. What's the definition? So it's it's tough. So it doesn't. So occasional practice is. A pretty strong word, although it's not well defined. Right. We're, we're not here to define occasion. We're not, we're not, we're not so. a court of law. We're not defining occasion. We're not doing You're not? We're not defining You're occasion. defining he what is sanctioned race. They didn't, say, they didn't say in their court finding that he could have occasional practice. So they said he could have practice. Roger, what's your opinion on the accessory use? My opinion is their principal use is a practice motocross track. They don't have a second use approved. The, the vending machine thing is, just because there was a woodworking shop there, doesn't mean they can say, oh, let's turn the woodworking shop into a vending machine company. Okay? My point is, their principal use is practice motocross track, cut and dry. If they want to have stage a coffee vending provider out of there, they should get a special permit to do that accessory use. If you think that they need to have a permit to sell parts when stuff breaks, then he needs a special hmm. permit to have a so pro you're, shop. You're, you're making the same argument I'm making, and I'm making the argument for Mr. Thoma. I'm making... That, that we should deny this, this appeal and ask them, instead of going through a court of law, to come back before this board and file for a special permit. Because there's two things that were decided on. Because there's it's accessory use. Yeah. So you're, you're, if we were here for the primary... You are saying that, Roger. You are. Excuse me? You are saying that. What I'm saying is... Is um, that we should... Do, I don't think we, we should, should deny, we should deny the appeal. That can get thrown away. Like, um, they are... But what, what's before us, Roger, is, is that season. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's an administrative... I don't, I don't, but you just made the argument for it. Well, it's because there's two You just made the argument that they should be coming to us. No, they should be coming to us for a special us. permit. Yeah. I'm asking you what, what's So you're upholding what um, Mr. Tomo said in here. What's before us is the multiple use of that property. Okay. I, don't, I don't think anybody yeah. here disagrees with the, the use of that property that he's within the letter of the law. Right. In right. regards to the motor track, in regards yeah, to the practice, the they're, they're, they're going to win an appeal when it right. comes to, exactly. to occasional use on that, exactly. my, 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 my opinion. Exactly. But if it goes to an appeal on us granting Mr. Thomo his cease and desist and denying his 
I believe we're going to win because right here we're all stating, they're stating that there's multiple use in that property. Yes. And our bylaw specifically states that he must become come before this board for that special permit for that use. Right. So he was telling us that it's grandfathered. Is that like accurate? It, I mean, what grandfather is that woodworking shop to be any business? Who the hell knows if there was a woodworking shop? Well, there, there, was. <laughs> there, there was. There was. Like what? what? That, that, that is a sharp it, it's, it's whether or not it was there prior I think to the. I'm old enough to know about this one. Whether or not it was there prior to the adoption of zoning. Okay. Whether or not it continued in its use for uh, up to, uh, it, it continued its use up till I think it was 2013 when he bought the when he bought the property and if it didn't last within the two years and whether or not it's the same basic nature and kind of business that was, right. okay. that is transferring over to now my. It's not. It's not self-evident. They provided us with no evidence that that was grandfather. That's right. No. Okay. Right. And just so that just so that the board knows, there are two issues here, and, and and I think that you could legitimately bifurcate. You could separate the two. One being the cease and desist for use of the property for two primary uses, which you know, from my understanding, sitting here, it sounds like you all agree. That, that cease and desist was, was proper. The other one is the expansion of the pre existing non conforming motocross track, which I think that's the one that's getting all the, 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 the this discussion from the board. But I, but I think you could do two motions. I was going to say, can't you do two? Because for what? Obvious for one. You either approve it or you deny it. Well, there are two, but there, he, he, he told them to the cease and desist for two different reasons. One that it was an expansion of the right. motocross track, and two, you've got a second, second you, you've got two primary uses, so stop one. Technically, well, it would be no, three primary uses. More than two. Well, it, I, I think it could be summed up. He's got more than two. Very well, could it be. It could be summed up into one. I think he's four. That that expansion is another use of above and beyond the primary. Right. It could be one motion. There's no need to to muddy it up. Right. I, I see the issue being whether or not there's a motocross track there and whether or not there's a venue. This court decision states he can have a motor tr motocross track. Right. For For exactly. Use. But the court decision doesn't say he can have a vending machine business there too. Your Correct. bylaw says no. Correct. Okay, so that's the one. The second one is, and this is what the zoning enforcement officer is saying, is that the court decision says you can have a practice track with the occasional motocross rider. You've gone far beyond that. The court does not say occasional. The court says, plaintiff can use the motocross track for practice. Nothing occasional about it. Gary's? Gary's? Occasional is in the court decision. It's right here. I think we've got to get away from the simplistic uh, uh, reading of this ruling. I have the ruling here. Uh, it concludes the plaintiff can use the motocross track for practice, like you just said, Roger. Because just prior to that, and as uh, Jeff has said, uh, further, even the court was presented persuaded that Wallace was still hosting races in 1988. Wallace was hosting races of school age children, not adult competitors, and there was a difference in quality of character and degree of use and the effect on the neighborhood between hosting races for children as opposed to adults in terms of possible hours of operation, potential behavior of the participants and fans. There is certainly a difference in the effect of the neighborhood on the occasional motocross rider, occasional motocross rider, practicing at the track and numerous commercial competitive races being hosted at the park. Now, the, the judge just, just didn't put that in there for the hell of it. The judge put, put it in there because that's the way she thought. And uh, and then she goes on to say, in conclusion, plan to use the motocross track for practice. But her definition of practice is just what I just read. So it's, it's to me, it's, it's obvious. You just can't say that, uh, oh, like, Mr. Porter's lawyer says, oh, well, we, we just won the case and the, and the and plaintiff can use the motocross track for any damn thing he wants to use it for, which includes uh, uh, four-wheel racing and snowmobiles in the winter and uh, who knows how many motorcycles over there through the course of the weekend, uh, and Saturday, Sunday, holidays, and every other thing. So it's, it's out of control, out of hand, and it needs to be stopped. But Gary, the, the wording is exactly what you stated. That paragraph sums it up. In conclusion, the plaintiff can use the motocross track for practice. 
Second sentence, the town is granted a permanent injunction prohibiting the use of track for racing. It states he can't use it for racing, but he can use it for practice. Yeah, but, but on the other hand, she defines what her thought process is. Oh, I, I get that. Yeah, but motocross has become a big thing. No, but, but we have, we have but, but again, we, we have, we have, we have bylaws for use in this town. We don't, we don't have drag racing here either. There's a cease and desist before you this board. I, I believe it, Beth. I just, I just want to also calibrate one thing that it's really hard when you've got a court decision that doesn't necessarily agree with what the town does. Motorcycle racing, and to Mr. Mundell's point, if, if NEMA or the AMA, they were running sanctioned with races there, they'd be obligated. Okay, the reason why Charlton doesn't have these type of fights around their professional track is their professional track properly permitted, okay, that considered their neighbors when established instead of trying to slide under the wire with the grandfather clause. They run AMA races, they do pipe checks, they do... But Beth, it's, it's apples and oranges. It's, it's, no, it's, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying finish. to make a point that, that, the language, is that the language is very slippery from the standpoint of, oh, I'm just running practice. Well, by, oh, just running practice, it is a means to avoid the restrictions that even the entities that run those racing organizations would place on them to be good neighbors and good stewards of the environment and of the neighborhood. I agree, so, but we're, we're so, limited to what a court no, decision I, states. I get it, but to go back Ch to the But, but Charlton is a new entity that followed the new procedures with the new bylaws. This is a grandfather oh, case. It's apples and oranges. I just want to finish what I'm saying. To Mr. Lincoln's point, the definition of that practicing is the old definition under the old scale of the track, which was local. Okay, I, I'm certain that most of the people who live along that route can tell you how many out-of-state vehicles are coming to that track today compared to the 1988. I bet you in 1988 when they were running the kids' tracks, it all, it was all Massachusetts. And we had all the I believe people agree with you, but what's before us is what the courts ordered, and that's right. what we have so, to stick but with. But to his point, you can't just look at the last paragraph. That whole section, okay, talks about defining it, talks about mostly kids, it talks about not 60, 70% adults, okay? It, it talks about a totally different scale of operation than what's there today. I think we need to figure yeah. out how we're going to break up the motion. But I, one, I, I, want, I want one motion, one motion. For, for what's on the table is the administrative appeal on, on the zoning enforcement officers cease and desist. That's what's before us. There's, yes, sir. Um, I, I'm, I'm Tim Dugas. I am the manager of the plan box. I believe I spoke with a few of you guys earlier today. Uh, I don't have much to say. I'm not a motocross driver. Yes, as they pointed out earlier, Dan and I tried to do something, so so me coming back as a new manager at the plan box could improve sales and in turn make my family a little money and my girls can go to gymnastics class and things like that. But you know, for me, I think it's ridiculous that we don't invite people from anywhere to come to our town. There's a lot to be benefited. I personally have hired and held three full-time positions more than last year at the Plant Box. A lot has to do with the changes we've been working on and moving towards a better restaurant, but some has to do with having a great neighbor, okay? And sometimes we all need to just sit back and think about what we're complaining about. Honestly, dirt bike riding, kids going and practicing, let's just buy video games and sit in front of the TV. That's all I have to say. I have to go run a business. I really hope that you guys can really think this through. This is 2018. We're here because we all care about it. I'm sure there's something we can do. I'm sure every single one of us can come together, figure out a solution that works for everybody. But the bottom line is, look at all the closed down businesses in our town. Where are we going? My kids need a future here, and I would appreciate if you guys would think about others before yourselves sometimes and maybe in return karma will treat you nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have quite a bit of experience in the past.
The fact that he has a practice course, if anybody who's a bike enthusiast or has a kid that's a bike enthusiast or has a friend, practicing is what they do. They live for riding. Why they're doing that? They're not out doing opiates because they trigger you can't OD and be riding a bike. You want to be nodding off. They might smoke a little weed, that's it. The fact, the fact that people act like this, <laughs> you know, it's 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 you're complaining about noise there, you live on the lake. How many times have you heard people racing their boats up and down the lake? Or in the wintertime, they're saying that he's making noise in the wintertime. That you can go on any of that lake property that's where everybody's running their freaking their snowmobiles. They race all this all right around the lake. Uh, ice fishermen. It's just putting out something that somebody did. The previous time when that sh the track got shut down, because I had purchased sales on that same piece of property that the town told me there's no way you're not letting anybody in there to do it. This guy at least had a deep enough pocket and maybe can read better than me and was able to fight with you guys to make it happen. And it's, it's a shame that you guys push people out of town. I had business in town. I own four houses in this town. You guys have chased me out. I wouldn't want to do a damn thing. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Yeah. And there was no license even available for what they pushed me up. And in the past meeting, they had a girl come in here complain that I had to jump car down at Mill Street. You guys were all done hoax. Send the zoning guys, send the cops. When you found it wasn't me, it was dropped. Amazing. We're talking about this. Though. Yeah, I'm just pointing out in your head, honey. There's four guys on the block. Was now. there someone over here? Was it Linda? <laughs> are running down there. Sometimes you'll have a group down there racing and you'll hardly hear them. Not bad at all. And then all of a sudden you hear another one fire up and it's very loud. I think, I think as a good neighbor, somebody should do some enforcement on noise levels. There's no need of this. You know, you take farm tractors years ago made a lot of noise. You don't even hear them running today. It's no different with bikes. I'm not a biker, but I think those of you that are and know something about it, they change the pipes and the mufflers because it gives them a little more power, supposedly. Now, maybe they ought to thank their neighbors when they do some of this stuff, and you wouldn't be here tonight. Thank you, sir. Sharon, right. last word. I just have to point out as chair of the planning board, Mr. Hammond came before a CERP permit and he was turned down. He could have appealed the permit decision and he did not. So for him to come here and complain about being unfairly treated is neither relevant to this discussion nor truthful. So back to the board discussion. So, so again, I, I believe it's it's a one motion vote to either accept his appeal, administrative appeal, or deny his administrative appeal. Are we okay with that? So when he comes back to, to I don't think he's coming. I don't think he's coming back. I think this I think this is gonna cost the town more money. I would have loved to have worked this out a month and a half ago like we tried to. There's no doubt in my mind you and I could work it out and and do it in less than a week. And it'd be a win win for the town. But May there's I, no communication, there's no nothing. I don't get any of it. May I just say one thing? Yep. Um, you know, uh, you used the word earlier, you know, Mr. Ford is, you know, playing the game. And I know you didn't, and I'm not trying to say how you meant it, but all Mr. Ford is doing is what he's legally entitled to do. 
I've looked at this 10 different ways, and I feel completely confident in giving him the advice that I've given him. And before you vote, think about one thing, okay? He's been there since 2013. He's had his vending business, he's had his track, he's been running it the same way. He did add showers, he, and, um, and he did add the pro shop. And everything else has been the same since 2013. And don't you think that if there was some reason that what he was doing was illegal, town council could have gone to court and got some sort of a stop order? You don't have to wait for this to be appealed. Once the cease and desist was issued by Mr. Simeon, town could have gone to court and got an injunction. Did Gary order one? No. And they haven't here either because they're going to get laughed out of court. <laughs> they're afraid to because it's so ridiculous what they're trying to sell to you. They'll never sell to a judge. And I'm glad this is on video because if you deny this, he's going to make a lot of money. I'm going to make a lot of money. He's going to make a lot of money. And these people are going to pay a lot of money. And I'm glad it's on video so two or three years from now, We'll have this tape, and you had your chance. Yep. 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 So, when you're running the track, um, considering seven days a week, and I assume only daylight hours, um, and there's Saturdays and Sundays. How many people at a time are you on the, are on it the track? It depends. It's all different. Well, give me some idea of this. Depends is you can well, flesh it's really, it out a little bit. That's, I mean, I don't have numbers. I don't want what, to What's the this. most that you have on the track at one time? We and don't have more than 30 bikes on the track at one time. Because if you have more than 30 bikes on the track at one time, it becomes too dangerous. Do you approach that very often? I do. That Not very place. often, no. Pro um, like during the week, it's very, very slow. We get two bikes to 20 during the week. And on the weekends, is busier? Yeah, because no one works. Everybody wants to go out on the weekends and have fun. Don't, don't you want to go out on the weekends and have fun and do what you enjoy? Go fishing, go hiking, go whatever you want to do? No one's telling you what to do on the weekends that you can't go hiking or go fishing and all that. So I feel that you know people have the right to do what they want to do on the weekends and enjoy their activities that they like to do. But, so. but again, this goes to the secondary <laughs> use. I, I believe it violates our bylaws. I believe if you came for a special permit, it'd be a totally different story as opposed to what's before us today, that administrative appeal. Do you have any comments, questions? Yeah, so on the Saturdays and Sundays, you approach, you can approach the uh, 30 people on the track and you limit it to that because of safety considerations. Okay. So I'm going to, based on the secondary use, that to me that's what it all comes down to, um, the accessory use, uh, Mr. Mundell made the argument as well. I'm going to entertain a motion to deny Mr. Plord's administrative appeal. Do I have a motion? I make that motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Can I clarify something first? Most well, certainly. If we deny his appeal, yep. does he have to stop his practice racing? No. He can continue practicing. My belief, yes. He's got a core. Did you say racing? Or well, practice. 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 I believe this court order allows him to practice. Well, not to. Not to the extent that he is. The, the secondary use, the shower. Well, the, no, no, the, the extended. extended use. That's I mean, why. I there's said testimony you know, just, during that hearing that he had five bikes on the track. You just heard three. We, we can't tell him operating hours through this through this hearing. You can't tell him. Op, maybe you, you can you can make a determination that he has gone beyond the grandfather to, use, which would require him then to come in to you and come into compliance with the zoning I, be, I believe just by this motion that does that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're essentially, if you're denying his appeal, there's two issues there. You're denying the entire appeal. Which, which so, is that he's only appealing Mr. Thomo's cease and desist. That's right. He's which not has systematically, right. he's not picking it apart. It's just one appeal. Yeah. So, if, so if this, this motion. If you would, deny it, then it's the entire. And, and, and just, just so that you know. Uh, I mean, we can't we can't tell him what the court's already told him. That's that's an argument in court of what his operating hours are and the definition of occasional uses. 
thus the desire to work this out before we made this decision this evening. In, 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 but you can make the determination that he, and that's what you would be doing by this, that he has, that he has gone beyond what was granted. I'm not, I'm not putting that out there. I, I have he said, she said. So basically, the above and beyond, we have to get past the, the point that it's not, what we're considering the above and beyond is just the second business. That's what we're mm -hmm. hoping to rule well, here. We're, we're but talking about second, second and third. Yeah. Well, second and third, yeah. Or but we don't want to go to the primary, which everybody is arguing about, that's because true. that's not the which issue. Which has already been dealt with. Which has before. already been dealt with. So yeah. the decision we made today is not based upon that, so <clears throat> nobody... It's, yeah, based, it's based on the appeal based on the fact that of what's before us, right. the appeal that was presented to us. On the two other businesses. It's too much on the plate. It's too much. So we have, so we, yes, sir. There, there, there are two issues before you. And unfortunately, you, 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 I, I don't think that you can dodge that second. You can break up the motion and say that I, I move to deny the appeal with respect to the use of the property for two primary uses. The application states nature of appeal, decision of zoning enforcement officer, period. Right. Nature of request, of relief request, overturn the decision and ruling. Right. Why not? But, but, but in the decision, there's two different bases for his, for the, I strike that, for the cease and desist, there's two different bases. One of them is you have you got two principal businesses. The other one is that you've expanded right. the non-conforming use that you had is protected such that now you need to come into compliance with zoning. The first one, I think that you guys are prepared to, to, to make a decision on, but there is a second one. And in, in my opinion, if you just approve or, or, or deny his appeal, you're denying it on both. As a whole. As a whole. So, so the order to Mr. Plourd was dear Mr. Plourd, you are hereby ordered to cease and desist from your use of the property located at 5 Claybox Street, Brookfield, Massachusetts, the property, for commercial purposes, including but not limited to competitive adult motocross racing and or practicing, as well as retail sales. Specifically, the property is located in the town's business B, BB, and floodplain zoning districts. The motocross track portion of the property lies within the FP district, which is the floodplain where the above described current commercial use of the property is not allowed. Mm -hmm. It's been grandfathered to be allowed. So then you go to the second page and it goes on further. As you are well aware, the use of the property has been the subject of recent litigation. Um, the district court considered whether the certain uses were protected. Uh, on February 26th, the court issued a memorandum. The court further held that there is uh, that the court further held the property could be used for limited motocross practice, and then we go on to say here that um, the the I understand, however, that you continue to use the property for more than occasional motocross practicing, and have been advertising memberships and regularly occurring commercial practice times for adults and even a Moto X Academy, which ex exceeds the scope of the allowed use of the property and is no longer a protected pre-existing non-conforming use. So those are the two issues before you. May I ask a can, can you give me one yeah. second? I'm just writing out what I'm, what's in my mind. So Jeff, I'd like to get this in one motion. So my thoughts is entertaining a motion to continue occasional use for practice as described in court finding and deny administrative appeal for operation of accessory secondary uses on said property. Well, I think then you run into the same problem of, of having 
the zoning enforcement officer having to, to define. It's not our fault that it wasn't defined. You, you can do that, but I but you're going to be right back here. I'm not. I'm going to. At that point, I'll have to obviously confer with the town, but it's likely if they want to stop it. What well, so there. so no disrespect to you or two of the selectmen that are here, but what the hell have you been doing for a month and a half? Wow. Would, you, would you like me to read the email that I got when I asked for a counter offer to the court, uh, to the entire public? I have not been in this one. They, 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 did not, they did not want to entertain it. Right. They call us ignorant. They call us a variety of other things in that email that I didn't. There's think nothing was about ignorance. Oh, really? I read it. Yes, it was. It didn't say ignorant. That word was in there. What? How are we supposed to know when we can use the track? Like what days and what hours? I, I wasn't privy to this, which which is amazing to me as well. Where is the word ignorant? Oh, for you whenever you're ready. Call the neighbors ignorant. Not anybody on oh, the, just the board. neighbors over here. Yeah. All those people behind you. I didn't call there, any of these people. But they are. Yeah. Was it ever established that two principal uses in the I didn't call you. I called the name. I didn't call you. I didn't call the. Yeah. What am I going to do? The principal principal. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Strike that. If you if you <laughs> if you don't get in order for it, it would probably be a better motion to say I move to uphold the cease and desist order. And if you don't get four people in favor of of of, of, of upholding it, or strike that. Well, you need three people. No, you need four. Unanimous. You need it unanimous. To make no, it, to, to so deny it. To overturn it. To overturn it, yeah. You need four. Yeah, to overturn it. But you meant, you meant, he's just playing devil's advocate. He's, 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 he's saying he's a motion to, to um, allow the appeal. Yeah, to, to, to approve the appeal. To yeah. approve the appeal. You need the four votes. I'm, I'm you need aware the four votes. So what's another way of So if you don't have the four votes, but what I'm saying is there are, two, there are two issues here. And it would be, if you deny the, his appeal, if three of you want to, Grant his appeal, and one doesn't. It's a he, denial. He wouldn't get it. He wouldn't get it. Correct. We would go to court, and it would essentially be for both this, for both issues. Yeah. Or so, you could break it up. And wording on that, I move to grant the property owner's appeal. Regarding the two principal uses of the property located at Five Quay Bog Street, our bylaws strictly prohibit that. That's why we're here. Right, and then if you, you need a special permit for that, the, and that's if, why we're here. Right, and if you vote, if everybody votes no, but we're not here for a special permit tonight. We're here for the cease and desist, the administrative appeal. But one of the issues is whether or not he can have a principal use of the property, uh, two principal uses. 
But the, no such thing as two principal uses there. It's one principal use and that's it. The, the court, he can have... What they call it a principal use. And the courts established that he can have that. That's true. We're here for his accessory uses. But the principal use is included in the decision we have to make. That's the problem. So, so they can argue this as much as, we, as they want. Are you okay with the motion? to continue occasional use for practice as described in the court findings and to deny the administrative appeal for operation of accessory secondary uses on said property? Yes. Define occasional. That, but, that's but, 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 that's, but, but that's, that's, but that's what it's referenced to the court finding. That's a, that's different. That's a whole other ballgame. And that's not for us to, for to us argue, to but, out. but we put it in there because that's what we're basing this on. Allowing him, not just carte blanche saying he can't do anything. Right. Which that other motion that Tim made, but wasn't seconded, so is not on the table, went towards. What do you want again? Huh? Well, read it again. I want again? I said read it again. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion to continue occasional use for practice as described in court findings, in the court finding, and deny it the administrative appeal for operation of accessory secondary uses on said property. What about the expansion of the primary use? But 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 that 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 first sentence covers it. Yeah. As defined by the court, occasional use for practice. Mr. Chairman, you know we're going to go to court. I know we are. So, so I'm trying to make it simple. No, you can't make it simple. I'm Just trying. With I'm it trying. And we'll see him in court because that's what it's going to end up. I know it, and you know it. But you can't. You can come before us for a special permit and yeah. alleviate all of that. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Just yes. a correction. Yes, it's sir. the planning board that they need to go before, not the ZBA. Just to let you know. All right. Yes. I, well, the problem is that we have no guarantees that we're going to get the, the permit, and we don't think we have to. We'll just go to court and have a judge over there. And that's that's your yes. discussion. Yeah. So, are we okay with the motion? I am. Yeah, I second that. Tim. Yeah. That motion allows him to continue by practice. It's right it's yes. black and white. Yes. So, so who's making the motion? Do I, have to, the motion? I didn't. I, I, I entertained the motion. Okay, I made the motion. Wait, would you read the motion? That we're <laughs> <laughs> Let's read this one yeah. more time. Yeah, read it. Please. Yes, sir. I don't have a problem with your motion, but I really think you need to define occasional. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Can't, we can't. We can't. But that's not what we're here for. We, I, I attempted to do that a month and a half ago. It, it didn't happen. We're here where we're here. We're at. We need to go to court. So the motion, the motion that I'm entertaining, please, people, entertaining a motion to continue, to allow Mr. Plour to continue occasional use for practice as described in the court finding and deny the administrative appeal for operation of accessory secondary uses on said property. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Roger's going to second it. Do we have discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? You're opposed? Yes. You're opposed? Right. So Tim is a no vote. The vote carries. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Thank the, you all. Just, just the, the appeal fails. What's that? The appeal. The appeal fee fails. Correct. Three to one. They upheld my appeal. I mean, they upheld my decision. Yeah. No, he misunderstood. Okay. <laughs> the, mo the motion to me carries and his appeal the, the motion in it states that we're not accepting it we're denying it so his most his appeal does fail through the motion the motion the motion carries he just said no he said something totally different well the, it, i think it practically speaking it has the same that that his appeal of the cease and desist fails. Fails. This, this motion carries. The motion is to deny 
the appeal. The appeal. Yeah. Okay. So what so, is this? So he gets to run his. As defined by this. And he can run his other businesses. Okay. Right. No. No. She no. tells. No. What's the, I want you to understand as well, Dan. What's up? I, I, I've owned a vending business in this town for 15 years. So. You good? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to entertain a motion to. So don't don't leave. We're not ending the meeting. I'm just entertain a motion to uh, adjourn the appeal by the hearing. Do I motion to adjourn hearing? All in favor? Tim, you okay with ending the Tim? You okay with ending the hearing? No, we have a question. We have a, I, we have a question about what Mike will The appeal, the appeal okay. failed. You know that, guys, right? But his appeal failed. His, that's, that was the motion. I know. I, I think he mistakenly he just voted against. Yeah. He wanted the appeal to fail. He mistakenly voted. But I think everybody's left. So. It has the same practical effect. Yeah, it does. It's still, it's still denied. His appeal still is denied. Yes. yes. And the cease and desist trade. Yes. For, for the secondary use. Yeah. yeah. For the, the, not for the, the, not for the court order. Right. Uh, the extra uses. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Unless he's supposed to. Yes. Period. Yeah. Period. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not clear right now. Yeah, no, we have to. Yeah. So you're you're right. He can't operate his water pumps. He can't operate in excess of. I mean, essentially, what the way. Wait, wait, wait. Excess of, there's no termination. Yeah, what we're doing. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're going to go to court anyways. Okay, good. So we're joined with the hearing. Um, have we? Tim, have you here for one sec? Are you going to stick around, Tim? I'll stick around. Well, we're not done with the meeting. Tim, so I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the uh, four sets of minutes that were presented. Yes. Do we have a motion? That, that we accept the minutes, the four minutes. Do we have a second? August. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn at 7.26? Make that motion. Do we have a second? All in favor? All right. Thank you, everyone.